before we get into the how to hit an inside out forehand, we'll get into why you should be hitting it a lot more. On the recreational level, at least, most players favor their forehand because probably their backhand is a little weaker. So if you're trying to move around your backhand, you hit your stronger shot a lot more often. With an inside out forehand, you can open the court a whole lot more, you create angles, and you push your opponent around a lot more. Hitting inside out forehands also allows you to shrink your opponent's court because, yeah, you're covering a lot more ground with your forehand and you taunt them to hit into smaller spaces. You can attack higher balls or defend higher balls a lot easier with your forehand rather than your backhand. With your inside out forehand, you can actually hide an inside in forehand a lot more. You disguise it a lot better than a regular backhand down the line. Most recreational players up to a really high level are actually way more confident with their forehand. They can hit harder, they can hit with more spin, they probably commit less errors than with their backhand. So yeah, let's use the forehand a little more often. Where should you start looking for your forehand? So if you're not Carlos Alcaraz, who is all the way over here, I would say anything to about a wide step from the hash mark. If you were to draw a line right here, that allows you to step around and find your inside out forehand. Once you're getting a little more comfortable with it, a little more confident with it, you can of course shrink that space a little bit more. But I would probably draw a line, literally, about here on the half from the middle line to the single side line. And you don't want to make the mistake to jam yourself or fall off to the left. I can open more angles and or I can push my opponent off the baseline. When do I choose what option? So to my mind, when you're being pushed back a little bit and you can still find your forehand here, that is when I want to hit a high and heavy ball to push them off the baseline because I want a shorter ball that sits around here to use my forehand. Either I'm going to go straight back inside out or then later, of course, I can add the inside in. Now, if I can move up a little bit more, then I want to hit a ball that actually bounces, of course, duh, inside the singles court, but passes the single sideline before it passes the baseline, because that really pushes them out wide. And then I have all of the deuce court open. If you cover all this area with your forehand, this is all your opponent has left. And of course, the faster you are, you can shrink this area even more. So you're forcing your opponent to hit really precise shots all the time. So that was one of the issues with Steffi Graf. Yes, her slice wasn't as great, but she basically lived on the ad side. So for you to beat her into the open court, you had to go over the higher part of the net into the shorter part of the court and hit the line pretty much because otherwise she'd do this. Nee, 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 nee. She had all of the deuce cord wide open, and so does everybody who's playing that pattern. Moving around and back to get your forehand here is so much easier than hitting a ball above your shoulder with the backhand. And of course, if you want to take the ball on the rise to defend against a higher, deeper ball or just deeper ball, to my mind, that's also easier on the forehand. And and I have a whole video that teaches you how to deal with high forehands, footwork patterns, targets, everything. And I'm going to put the link down in the description. So let's move on. If you're getting into the habit of hitting more inside out forehands, more from the outside, it becomes a lot easier to also disguise your change of direction, your inside in. Because to my mind, that's a lot harder to read than changing direction with a backhand. Okay, we got all the reasons why you should hit your inside out forehand more covered. How do we hit it? The preparation is key. Upper body, same preparation as on a regular forehand. You got your unit turn, but you got to create way more space. And you do that with one of two footwork patterns. If you don't have as much ground to cover, it's okay to shuffle and then drop into a semi-open stance and you can really heavily load. If you have to cover more space, you want to use a drop step because that grabs a lot more room right away on the first step. Now, when you're creating space for your inside out forehand, make sure that you're not just moving laterally because that tends to lead to 
falling off the ball and unintentionally pulling the ball inside in. So you actually want to move a little bit more in a semi-circle. And of course, we're going to do drills with that in a minute. But here's how it goes. Whether you're using a drop step, shuffles, you want to make sure that you are setting up so that you can transfer your body weight back into the direction of where you're going. Okay, really cool drill to help you find your proper distance to the ball is actually use your left hand, your off hand, very actively. So what you want to do is you have somebody toss the balls to you or set the ball machine and you just want to catch the ball. You're not hitting the ball yet because that really forces you to come all the way around. One of the key points on the inside out forehand is that if I'm hitting an inside out forehand, I want to turn so much that my opponent from the other side is seeing my left shoulder blade and my left hip. And that's what you're working on in this drill. And then you just throw it out. And I can start working on my different footwork patterns and then we're taking it up a notch. Okay, one more drill to make sure that you're also recovering properly because I do see that a lot, that people are going for a big either inside out or inside in forehand and they're not recovering, they're just admiring the shot. So if you do go inside in, remember that you are going with a lower percentage shot and you would also have to recover over to the deuce court side, but since it's an inside out video, you're having to recover to your bisector of an angle to make sure that I'm transferring my weight into the shot I want to make sure that I'm moving into the court. So that's why I have the cone there. And then I'm coming back, boom, and I'm starting over. Now, if you're ready to go out on the court, hold on a second. Make sure you watch this video because you do need a lot of topspin, especially when you're attacking shorter balls because you need that rotation to keep the ball in play. So check it out.